Today on Disney, it's how the rich do Disney cruise. From concierge cabins to private elevators being first in line for early access before the cruise, to special locations reserved just for them on the ship. We're going to dive into how the rich do a Disney cruise. Now, many of us have had some type of contact with Disney throughout our lives, whether it was a stuffed animal or a favorite movie or song, or maybe even the theme parks or cruises. Disney is fairly accessible to all ages and incomes in some form or fashion, but the rich do Disney completely different from everyone else. And the first step on this trip is concierge cabins because in order to get on the ship, you've got to book your stateroom and they start with the most expensive, of course, and that's concierge. Concierge category is where you're going to find all of their suites and there's lots of extra inclusions that come with concierge that really make it worth it for some people. You'll get to experience Disney's concierge service even before you get on the ship. They offer pre-arrival services. Concierge booking of activities opens up at 120 days prior to sale date. However, they can email the concierge team beginning 130 days before sailing or have your travel agent do it depending on how you booked. As soon as the 120 day booking window opens, they will start booking things on your behalf. So things like port adventures, celebrations or special occasions, your reservations for Remy for the spa, you have a request for Cabana, which we'll go into in just a minute. All of those requests you can make through the concierge team instead of having to do it yourself. Concierge will also have a private sun deck, special concierge hosts. With dinner, you may have main dining delivered to your room, which is not anything you can do anywhere else. And Apollo delivery is available to the Royal Suite guests. Concierge guests also get priority seating at shows, exclusive character meet and greets, as well as a concierge lounge. This lounge is exclusive to concierge. They will have continental breakfast items in the morning, lunch, dinner offerings, and desserts as the day progresses. In addition to that, they will also have soft drinks, packaged popcorn, and they have a bar. There is an open bar with concierge lounge from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m., and these are complimentary. When you board on embarkation, there's a private lunch available only for concierge concierge or you will get to meet somebody from concierge and go through all of your plans for the cruise. But one of the other really great concierge perks is if you have young ones with you, I believe it would be really nice to have the youth activity staff come to you rather than having to take them to signups. So if you've got youth especially under 12, you're gonna have to go in, sign up, get wristbands, etc. for the youth clubs and that's great. They're fun to use, definitely worth it. But the rich travel concierge and they don't have to go do that. The youth activity counselors come to them and and get everything set up, which is a much more enjoyable start to your vacation, I'm sure. They do also have some additional Wi-Fi that comes with a concierge suite, so check into that if you are going to do that. And it is those rooms that are suites that have the option of having dining brought to their room. And while they don't have a specific exclusive elevator for concierge, at least not that I'm aware of, they do have special keys, so at times they can have use of an elevator exclusively for concierge, most likely when boarding the ship. The, the elevators are kind of difficult to get on. If they had an exclusive elevator for concierge, that would be a huge selling point. They will also have priority boarding for concierge. You won't actually have to choose a port arrival time. They also have their own check-in area, which is obviously going to have a lot less people. And concierge passengers can also disembark before regular passengers on the ship. They will also typically get a souvenir gift on the final evening. These are usually exclusive Don Ducky Williams prints. They also have upgraded amenities and a stocked mini fridge. As far as pricing, it's going to vary a lot. If you're trying to find a deal on a concierge room, obviously that's not going to be a thing. However, they do have a very broad range of costs for concierge staterooms. If you really want to try it without spending too much money on it, look for a three night cruise and just go down and look through those stateroom prices. I think the cheapest I have probably seen is about $4,500 for concierge on a three night cruise. That doesn't mean that is the lowest it goes. That's just what I've seen. I've also seen $20,000 for concierge on a three night cruise, so it really does vary. One other thing that can be kind of fun with concierge is the priority cabana reservations on Castaway Key. Which takes us right into number two, and those are cabana reservations for Castaway Key. As many of you know, Castaway Key is Disney Cruise Line's private island, and a cabana is the ultimate luxury snag on the island. They are really hard to get. The cabanas will often sell out to the concierge guests right away. And just because you are a concierge guest, that does not ensure that you will get a cabana on Castaway Key. The cabanas are under port adventures. When you're doing your booking, the concierge level stateroom guests are able to inform the team of preferences 
passes for these cabanas 120 days prior to cruising. Platinum members are also allowed to book at this date, but from what I have seen, it is almost exclusively concierge that manage to snag these cabanas. Once in a while, somebody from Platinum is going to get one, and that's about it. They are upgrading their Castaway Club member designations, and there is now a new Pearl category for those that have cruised 25 cruises or more. So people having access to the cabanas will be a little bit less with that new Pearl category, but it really is a lot of pixie dust when you're able to snag one of these. So what's so great about the cabanas on Castaway Key anyway? These are all day cabana rentals on Castaway Key. And of course, not all cruises will be going to Castaway Key. These are typically the Bahamian and Caribbean cruises. If you're on the family beach, they also have a few toys that are included with the cabana. Things like for snorkeling, playing in the sand. They will also have a shower to rinse yourself off with. And there are some things that are included in the cabana, like fresh fruit, snacks, water, sodas, sunscreen, things like that. Of course, a cabana host will come with it. And they also have bikes and floats that you can use as well. They do have an in Indoor and outdoor section and at the end of the day no need to walk catch trams any of that they'll bring their little golf cart pick you up and take you right back to the ship they have a maximum of 10 or 16 guests depending on which one and the prices range from about 400 to a thousand also depending on which cabana you get number three is specialty dining of course you've got to try some specialty dining and the rich get to do it a little bit differently if you're staying in the concierge royal suite you can actually have Paulo dinner delivered to your stateroom I think that's pretty cool but to be honest I I'd rather go to the restaurant. There are either one or two specialty dining restaurants on each ship. The smallest ships, the Magic and the Wonder, will have Palo, which is their northern Italian fare. They will have both a dinner and a brunch for Palo. It's typically about $45 per meal. The way they used to do the brunch was sort of a buffet as well as a menu. That was by far our favorite Palo experience. I'm not sure if they have gone back to buffet. When we traveled post-COVID, they had not included the buffet again yet. So if you know if they are doing that for Palo Brunch, please let us know. Please note that Palo Brunch is typically only available on sea days. It is also important to note that all of their specialty dining is for ages 18 and above. On the Dream and Fantasy, they have Palo as well as Remy. Remy is their fine French inspired cuisine. Their dinner experience begins at $1.25 per person. You can add the wine pairing onto that, which of course you're going to want to do. And they also have a steak pairing as well. The Miyazaki and Wagyu beef. I believe that was an extra $60 for the tasting on that. You can easily get into two to $500 per person on Remy dining for dinner. We do have a video all about dinner. Check that out when you're done with this one, of course, because it is the most expensive meal on Disney Cruise Line on cruises of four nights or longer. Remy also offers a champagne brunch, which is 75 per person, and they will have a dessert experience as well, which is $60 per person. They do have a strict dress code at Remy, so make sure you check that out. If for some reason you did not bring what you need, they do actually have some pants and jackets that you can rent on the ship. Ashante is the fine French dining on the Disney Wish and features a gourmet menu by three Michelin starred chef Arnaud Lallement. And interestingly enough, they have a touchless menu at Ashante, which is kind of cool. They have a couple of different selections there. They have a typical five course meal at 125 per person, or they have a nine course meal called the Collection, which is 195. And of course, they're gonna have wine tastings that you can add as well. They have a champagne brunch, and they also have a dessert tasting. The rich definitely try all of these, at least as much as time allows. You do need reservations for all of the specialty dining, and you actually need reservations for almost everything on this list. A lot of it will be selected prior to the cruise, and again, you have the concierge team to assist you in that selection process, or to even do it for you. Number four is the Royal Tea Party. The first thing I want to say about this royal gathering is that it has changed its name. They used to have a princess gathering that was free. You just needed to pre-book it in order to meet four different princesses during that gathering. They had a royal gathering that was very expensive. They have changed the names. The princess gathering is now known as the Royal Gathering. Again, that is included in the cost of the cruise. You just need to make reservations for that gathering when those reservations open up online. What used to be the Royal Gathering is now called the Royal Court Tea. So now that we've cleared up that confusion, what is the Royal Court Tea? It is one of the most expensive add-ons for a Disney cruise. 
$220 per child and $69 per adult. And no, you cannot go without a child. You do have to have one to attend this tea gathering. These are right up there with the cabanas and hard to snag, so make sure you get there right away when your session opens up. And if you are traveling concierge, make sure and let your concierge team know how important that is to you. The Royal Court Royalty is for ages 3 through 12 and must have at least one adult 18 or older with them. For those ages 3 to 12, there are gifts that are included as well. Disney Cruise Line states this character dining event will include storytelling, singing, dancing, tasty treats, elegant gifts, and of course, visits from princesses. They'll have both a savory and a sweet course and a selection of herbal teas. For the princess-themed gifts, they have jewelry box, a link bracelet, necklace with charms, a Cinderella doll, an autograph book with pen, and tiara. The knight-themed gifts are royal court cinch bag, sword and shield, pens, autograph book, and Duffy the Disney Bear plush. The royal court royal tea might be a fun thing to do on a Bibbidi-Bobbidi Boutique Day, which is number five. Again, this does need to be reserved ahead of time. The Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique and the Pirates League are available on all ships. At Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique, storybook fantasies come to life with a wave of a magic wand. Fairy godmothers, apprentices will transform your young ones into elegant princesses, valiant knights, or an adventurous sea captain. These packages offer themed costumes as well as styling and accessories that will have your young ones ready for a royal ball or a daring adventure. These range from $100 to $450, which is the princess signature package. It comes with all that fun hairstyling, makeup, etc., but it also will have a princess gown with heirloom quality fabrics and a high quality crystal tiara with box in addition to the other items included with that package. Pirate League costumes range from $60 to $200 and include things like makeup, shoulder parrot, sword, and these do need to be booked ahead of time. I have heard that they actually have this available for adults now. I have not seen that. If you know if they do have an adult option, let us know in the comments below. Number six is exclusive to the Disney fantasy. This class does need to be booked ahead of time and is called Paolo B. R. Chef. With this class, you will actually get to go and cook some of the Northern Italian cuisine at Paolo with Paolo's expert chefs. How cool is that? We really considered doing this one. Historically, this Paolo class is available once per cruise for a maximum of eight people, and it is on a port day. Disney Cruise Line says rub elbows and aprons with their culinary wizards. Eat, drink, and prepare for an incredibly appetizing adventure only on the Disney Fantasy. You'll get to cook side by side with Paolo's chefs. You'll get to make some of the very favorite from the brunch menu, including their margarita pizza, butternut agnolotti ravioli, and their popular signature dessert, the limoncello tart. In addition to that, they'll also have some caprese salad for you, as well as the wines, and you will also get to taste a selection of their wines while Paolo's resident sommelier explains the intricate art of wine pairing. This class does come with gifts as well, including a personalized Paolo's chef's jacket, apron, hat, and name tag, plus a keepsake menu, recipe cards, and photos with the chef, as well as a surprise guest. It is a three-hour class, and it's $2.79 per guest. This one is again for 18 and up and does have some particulars with their dress code like closed toed shoes. So if you do reserve this activity, make sure you look into that. And while we're talking about exclusive experiences, we're going to hop on over to the Disney Wish for number seven and that is their Star Wars cocktail. At Star Wars Hyperspace Lounge, they have a cocktail called the Kyber Crystal and it costs $5,000. Yep, $5,000. So this drink is actually four drinks and they do come in souvenir cups as well. These cocktails will come in a device called a Camtono. If you are familiar with Star Wars, you will recognize this term. You do not get to take the delivery device home. It is just the souvenir glasses inside that you will take home with you. When they open this up, there will be smoke coming out of it, which makes it a really cool experience. The drinks within it, there will be three small drinks and one large one in it. Technically, I think these are shots as well as a cocktail. The small ones are a Pappy Van Winkle's Family Reserve 23 year bourbon, Taylor Fladgate Very Old Tawny Port Kingsman Edition, and Watenshi Gin. These are extremely exclusive drinks. I actually would love to try that port, but I don't know about paying that much money to try it. The cocktail is a bark speeder. The cocktail is made with cognac, yuzu and kumquat, and Grand Marnier quintessence. I think one of the coolest things that comes with this drink is that you'll get a bottle of sparkling wine from Skywalker Ranch and a voucher to visit the Skywalker Ranch. The Skywalker Ranch is completely private and this is the only way that you can actually visit it. 
And then in addition to that, it also comes with a few other fun Star Wars gifts, like a water bottle or a backpack. Number eight, if you're doing Disney Cruise Line like the rich do Disney Cruise Line, you definitely want to add some spa services. And one of those things is one that we've actually gotten a couple of times, and that is their Rainforest package. The Rainforest room is part of the spa, but it is a special location within the spa, and it does vary a bit from ship to ship. All of the Rainforest room have a thermal suite with steam and saunas. They have sensory experience showers. And on the Disney Fantasy and Dream, they have two hot tubs that overlook the ocean as part of the Rainforest. And the Disney Wish has an outdoor oasis with one of the few hot tubs on the ship. These can be purchased as day passes or for the length of the cruise. For the Disney Fantasy, I believe it was about $300, maybe $250 for the week as well as the gratuity. And that's probably gone up a little bit. That was in 20, late 2019. And then of course they have traditional spa services like facials, massages, body therapy, salon services. And if you want to travel like the rich do on Disney Cruise, you can check into their stone therapy couples massage or their bamboo couples massage. Those are approximately $500 for 90 minutes. These are for 18 and up on the Disney Wish. On some of the ships, they do also have teen exclusive salons. And the last way the rich do Disney Cruise is of course shopping. There are a lot of add-ons that you can add to your cruises. Things like birthday decorations for your stateroom, sail away decorations, really expensive fruit plates, wine packages. They did have Tiffany's available on the Dream and Fantasy. They have taken that out, but they still have plenty of luxury shopping available. White Caps is their upscale shop featuring fine sportswear, swimwear, apparel. They also have duty-free watches, crystal fragrances. There are Bulgari items on board as well as exclusive Disney collectibles, animations, and they have the Disney Doonies. And of course, the rich doing Disney are going to get all of those photos. There are some fairly expensive photo packages available also. Disney Cruise Line is certainly evolving lately. As Walt Disney once said, we keep moving forward, opening new doors and doing new things because we're curious. And curiosity keeps leading us down new paths. Obviously, we always want to stay curious in life. And I'm really curious to see how Disney Cruise Line is going to grow over the next few years with their two new ships coming up as well as the one they just purchased. It's going to be an interesting time. Thanks for being here. Thanks for joining in the Disney fun. Thanks for joining us today. Make sure you subscribe. We'll see you real soon with some more Disney's.